Did you know black women only make 63 cents for every dollar white men make? Let's talk about it. Black Women's Equal Pay Day is a date that highlights the difference between black women's pay and white guys' pay. There was a study conducted by the Women's Institute of Policy Research. Black Women's Equal Pay Day is the difference between black women's pay and white guys' pay. Um, essentially, it takes about 19 months for a black woman to make the same amount of pay as a white man in the United States. So, if you were Tamika and you wanted to compare yourself to Tom, it would take Tamika roughly 19 months starting from January of 2017 to current August 2018 to make the same amount of money that Tom made in the year of 2017. Doesn't seem right. It's a little bit off in my estimate, but we live in a crazy world. In this study, it states that black women make roughly $41,348 in the year of 2016 versus white guys pay of $57,922 in the year of 2016. <laughs> That's a hell of a difference. But this is what it's been all about. We've been seeing a lot of things in terms of unfair pay. We're seeing commercials about it. We're starting to see more women's movements about it. So here's another highlight from that institute research study to say, hey, this stuff is really, really bad. I mean, it's, it's so bad we have major, major corporate sponsors to it now that are highlighting it from Lyft to uh, Adidas and the very, very other big corporate sponsors. So it's starting to really get some traction. It's really highlighting the inequity or the oppression that's taking place when it comes to black women. Inter interestingly enough, uh, the other day, Black Enterprise ran an article stating that black women's student loan debts were higher than the national average as well. The national average for a student loan debt is about $22,000, and debt for black women is about 30, let me, let me look at my notes, 30400 That's a big difference. So not only do black women not get paid equally, they also have to take on higher loads of debt in terms of education just to get to that pay level that is below white men. So when you have lower income levels, higher student loan debts, that puts a crunch on black wealth or the black wealth gap that helps to expand it. So we're looking at two things. We're looking at lower lower income and widening wealth gap. Not looking good for the black community, especially since black women are the breadwinners and of the black community. So a lot of times when you see these studies, they're talking about the symptoms of what's going on. But you know, I like to talk more about what's actually the root cause, what's causing this. And so when you look at a lot of things in our society, you know, the root pillars, you look at things like business. In the Fortune 500, there are no black CEOs. Excuse me, there are no black female CEOs. There's only about three black CEOs. Uh, I do want to give a special men mention to Rosalind Brewer, who is the CFO at Starbucks, and that recently happened. She came over from Sam's Club. So she is in the executive suite, or what they call the C-suite. So that's one, all right? Um, and Ursula Barnes actually just stepped down from Xerox. She's actually one of my, my heroes. We'd love to meet her one day. But she was the CEO of Xerox. So she left that role in 2016. So she was the last black female CEO of a Fortune 500 company. All right, so here, here is a bit of a history lesson for you guys. There's only 19 black women who are holding congressional seats right now in 2018, August 7th. There's only one black woman in the Senate. All right, so the first black woman that ran for Congress and won was Shirley Chisholm. She ran in 1968. All right, since then, there's only been 38 black women in the Senate excuse me, in Congress, and only two black women in the Senate, one currently being served now. So you're seeing the bulk of this, of, the, of these constituents or these elected officials start just starting to happen. So you know there's a big lag that's going on. Even for our Latino sisters, it's really hard. They only make 41 cents for every $1 white men make. So they actually have it a bit worse than black women. So I was asked this question by one of my viewers who asked me my opinion on black women's pay equity. I was asked, what are some overall good 
steps to remedy or bring parity to this overall situation. So in my opinion, there, there are lots of things that can be done, but again, it's systemic. It's, it's purely fueled by, in my opinion, uh, misogyny, um, in my opinion, fra fragile male egos. Um, th there's a lot of things that are going wrong with this situation and it's imbalanced in pay between black women and white men. But I think one thing that you can do, the best thing you can do is go places where gender doesn't matter, where we're gender neutral, right? I know probably some of y'all saying, yeah, right. But saving, savings is gender neutral, right? Oftentimes black women do not save enough because many times they are the head of households and before they take care of themselves financially and begin to save and invest, they are paying for other household needs. They are doing the lion's share. Of, of household chores and, and cleaning and, and daycare or handling those things. So one thing you can do is save more and spend less. All right, save more, spend less. There's no gender bias there, right? The same interest rate white guy gets, you get, all right? So that's one thing you can do right off the top. I think you also have to look into generate more business outside of saving, outside of work. Get a side hustle, start a business. I mean, internet business, gender doesn't matter. Um, people, there's all kinds of fake accounts or fake businesses or business business people with different people in the forefront than necessarily the owner. The internet is blind to all that. They only see what you put out and project. So look at starting an internet business. Everybody knows I love the stock market. Look at investing in the stock market. There's other videos um, floating around that I've done um, and you can take a reference back to those. I'll do some more women uh, investing videos or specifically women videos going forward in the future. This is something I think a lot of us take for granted. You need to optimize for the tax code. What I mean by that is the tax code benefits certain people, right? Tax code benefits certain activities. So you need to align your money, your finances with the activities that are within the tax code that are favorable. All right, so that's what I call tax code optimization. So the other thing, so outside of going where gender doesn't matter, right? Oftentimes in black communities, black women spend money predominantly in businesses that don't look like them whatsoever, whether it be nails, hair, um, sometimes food. Those are businesses that you could easily get together and, and start to form yourselves. We just saw a big incident in Brooklyn, New York, where a nail salon uh, owner and workers beat up two black women that came there and used and used their services and paid for their services in the store. Some kind of dispute happened. So to me, those are areas that black women should be looking to over-index in, invest in, build businesses in, and operate. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to say it. I don't really believe that you can necessarily go to the system that's been oppressing you and holding you down and expect them to change. I don't think that's going to happen. However, I do think there's plenty of opportunities out there in the field. Um, you don't just necessarily have to make more money working a job. At the end of the day, we want to make more money so we can have more wealth. So there's plenty of things you can do in terms of starting a business or potentially a side hustle. The last thing I would say when we want to get more policies involved, we want to get more things changed, is black women should get more politically involved. Now, black women are already politically involved. When you look at Alabama with Roy Jones, they got him out of there. So clearly they're, they're making a difference. All right, we're seeing more black women and people of color, women, female, being elected to um, elected offices and official offices. So that's already being done. But we can do more. We can do more. When you look at voter uh, turnout, you can definitely get more of that. Okay, so black women take over more political spaces. It'll definitely help to increase pay, gender pay. It'll help increase overall equality across the board. But don't just think of conventional ways of attacking the, uh, the uh, gender pay gap. All right, when you see what's going on with the Me Too movement, nothing stops women once they get going. Nothing stops black women once they get going. So, but just be creative and think about some other things outside the box. Save, invest, save, invest, spend less, buy businesses or start businesses that are already in areas where you spend your money and you don't necessarily get any equitable return on it, all right? 
So here's my question to you. What do you think can be done about income inequality, gender inequality, in regards to black women and white men's pay? What solutions do you have? See you next time. Have a great day. Oh, my God.